Welcome. My name is Candace Sanderson. I'm happy that you could join me today. In looking through my journal, something caught my attention and I thought I would share it with you today. This is from a couple of days in July, the year 2020. It was actually July 5th and then July 11th. I had attended a few online events and we did, I did a lot of online events back in 2020. But these events began with a very short, like five to 10 minute drumming session before the meeting actually started. Over the years, I have had such profound experiences with native culture, white buffalo, for example. So now, as soon as I hear those first few beats of the buffalo drum, that is all it takes for me to go out of body and deep into the 5D. I'm sure you know this, but in case you don't, yes, you can have significant experiences without being physically present. Online events are very powerful. But back in 2020 with this first event, as soon as the drumming began, I saw a beautiful tree of life. This is something that's spoken of, tree of life, across many religions and cultures. In fact, my last episode, I talked about a Kabbalistic tree of life, but this tree that I saw looked much different. It looked like a real tree, whereas the Kabbalistic tree was made from sacred geometry. When I have these experiences, they're not really like the 3D, you know, not at all, because they're actually more real. All of my senses become heightened. And when I come back to the 3D, when it's over, I feel that everything is compressed. Everything feels like it's tuned down. Everything is a little bit duller than what it is in the 5D. It's as if all of my senses have to shut down to some extent in order for me, the true me, my spirit, my essence, to survive in this dense physical body that we call home while we're incarnated on earth. But when the drumming began and I saw the tree, first it was from a distance. You know, I step back and I'm looking at it. I don't think it's an oak tree, but that's the closest thing I can come to in describing it. But it is so tall. It is much larger than those giant sequoia trees that you see out west. In fact, it's so tall, I can't even see the top of it. This large, gnarly trunk is front and center, and I'm drawn toward it. Now, I know that the roots to this tree connect to the very essence of our planet, Mother Earth's essence, the spirit Gaia. And I realize that these roots hold us in place. Those roots, just like with the tree, gives us sustenance in our world. The roots do that. They set the foundation and the pattern for growth. Now, as that realization comes to mind, I can't help but think of my first message from Spirit way back in August of 2013 on that early morning commute. That's when a message about a flower came to me, talking about staying grounded in the earth and being aligned with source. It will help us bloom. It will help us blossom. The messengers talk about how humans are flowers of energy. And when we are grounded and in alignment, we can grow beyond our wildest imaginations. Just like that flower of energy, this sacred tree of life is also a giant roadmap for growth. I am drawn to this tree like a magnet. And as I step in front of it, the closer I get, the more I feel it. It's calling to me magnetically and magically. Then it feels like a smoky substance begins to leave me through my heart 
and it floats toward this tree. When it reaches the trunk of the tree, the rest of my body just melts into the trunk. Now, let me back up a little bit. It took me years to be able to discern this energy because it is so subtle. But now I can actually feel it in real time. I can now see it from the observer perspective and feel it from the participant perspective. But I've made this trip before to this sacred tree of life, and it's often the same voyage. My essence slips into the trunk, and then I go wherever I'm called. I could go up toward the energies where the angelic beings are. I could go down to meet power animals. If I have a pressing issue, I certainly could and would use an intention before I make this little voyage because setting intentions lay the foundation for the energies to manifest what I'm looking for. But in this case, I did not set an intention. I just let the energy carry me wherever I needed to go. You see, I trust in the wisdom of spirit. I let it guide me. So within seconds, I'm sliding down a wet, slippery, very cool tunnel. I'm in the earth and the temperatures become cooler the farther I go. As I slip down, I'm in what looks like this muddy tunnel. It, it feels like a, I'm in a tube or a shaft inside a root. And I can actually feel these small hair-like roots tickle my sides as I speed up. That's the participant in me feeling in real time what my energy body perceives. Suddenly, I pop out of this root tunnel and I find myself standing in a very hot, humid jungle or maybe it's a rainforest. How do I know that? Well, because I was there. I felt the humid heat rising from the jungle. I smelled the sweetness of jungle flowers. I heard sounds of the exotic life. I, I don't know whether they were birds or monkeys. And I thought that I heard the roar of a jungle animal. The sounds of insects buzzing by and birds overhead surround me. Something catches my attention and I turn to the right when I see and hear something running toward me. It's a black jaguar, one that I've become familiar with over the past years. There's another long story about Lily, this black jaguar, who is my power animal. But as she takes off, I know to follow. We come to an opening in the jungle and I see a beautiful giant waterfall and its white waters are plunging deep into a pool of blue green liquid that actually looks like the sky. I follow the jaguar as she dives into this deep pool and once in the water, my essence disappears. I am no longer in my body. I become the water. I can no longer see the jaguar, and I know intuitively that she too has become one with this beautiful blue pool of liquid. The drumming sounds change, and that indicates that the drumming session is coming to a close. You know, after all, this was only a five or 10 minute prelude to the real event on Zoom. So when I hear that change in the drumming, I reverse direction, I come back through the jungle, then immediately up the tunnel from the root of the tree, and I land in the 3D world of sitting where I am right now, on my chair in front of my YouTube studio. Now the next week, July 11th, 2020, I attended this same Zoom meeting, and as before, we began with the brief drumming. 
as soon as it began, without any forewarning, I slipped into the root tunnel like the week before. It is as if no time has passed at all, which of course it has not. Time is a construct only for the 3D worlds. And this is also an example of something I've mentioned lately of bookmarking. Although I did not intentionally set a bookmark of that tunnel, it automatically happened for me and I was there. But I certainly welcome the cool dampness. It's such a relief from the hot, humid Florida weather where I live. I pop out of the tunnel and land in the same place as I did last week in the middle of a jungle or a rainforest. My journey into this lower world begins where my journey ended last week. Lily, that beautiful black jaguar, my power animal. We are both standing at this deep, beautiful blue green pool of water. I look around and there's that roaring waterfall overhead. And this time I notice that it's muffling the jungle sounds. And as Lily and I dive into the water, we dissolve into infinity. And then a message arrives. Be part of all that is, for that is your birthright. Learn to accept those frequencies and vibrations surrounding you, for that is your lifeline to your true essence. Learn to accept that which you cannot change and know that which you can change. Guide your life through your intent. I immediately had a vision of myself in a canoe. So yes, this is a vision within a vision. While in the canoe, it is silently snaking its way through waters deep within this jungle. The river becomes swifter and my first instinct is to fight the current with my paddles. And then I realized, you know, if I just kick back, the river does the work for me. So I literally go with the flow. I had an intuitive knowing that this represented how I should live my life. I understood that guidance comes from within and the path is laid before me, one thread at a time. The message continues. Be in the present moment. Let your heart guide you, not your head. Follow the beat of your heart. Know what occurs is occurring now and in real time. Your life unfolds one millisecond at a time. Sink deep into the pulse of the drum, into the rhythm, into the silence between each beat. Know that that is where truth lies. Learn to stretch your senses to tap into the subtleties of life. For this is where I reside. I, the true you, your essence, lives within your heart. Let not the trouble of others guide your path. Follow the path of truth, of love, of compassion. Step into the divinity of your true nature, the unity and oneness with all that is. I step out of the pool of water and I look around and I see the jaguar by my side. I know it's almost time to leave, but I also know I can return here anytime I wish. Seconds before the drumming signals change, indicating it's time to return. In a flash, I slip back into the mouth of the tunnel and I return upward through the tree. Within seconds, I am in full consciousness back in my YouTube studio in Naples, Florida. As I look at the message, follow the beat of your heart. That is certainly shamanic, that drum beat representing the heartbeat. The messengers have always told me that the heart is a portal to the 5D. So it makes perfect sense that a drumming exercise 
would catapult others into 5D experiences. When the message described the pulse of the drum, the rhythm of the drum, and the silence between each beat, it shows how it works. It's letting go and flowing into those divine spaces, the spaces between the beats of the drum. It's letting go of time and following, like that canoe on the swift river, it's going with the flow. I also like that second paragraph where it talks about stretching your senses in order to tap into the subtleties of life itself. Then talking about the true you, your true essence lives within your heart. And, you know, follow the path of truth. Don't let others bother you. Go on your own path. But stretching your senses to tap into the subtleties of life, that goes hand in glove with letting go and allowing. When you do that, you step outside of that particle state in the body and you begin to exist in that expansive field state where you know you are one with the universe. The more messages I receive, and especially when I revisit them years later like this, I recognize the patterns. The messengers tell me things that I may not have been able to fully understand at the time, but later understanding comes. Time after time, these words of wisdom come to me. And like the end of the message talking about Stepping into the divinity of your true nature, the unity and oneness of all that is. That's where the key lies. When we realize we are so much more than our physical body. Well, with that, I will end the episode. Thank you for joining me on my adventures into the unknown. Know that you are much more than your physical body. Listen to your heart as it leads you on a wisdom path that might not be accessible through other means. Remember, always be kind. Be kind always and in always. Until next time, goodbye.